I am Spencer Saito, and I'm going to talk about Chapter 7 of Combating Mountaintop Removal. Some key arguments of this chapter was that women in leadership positions is a representation of Appalachian community activism and allow women to fight for social and political change. A few organizations that were mentioned in this chapter and led by women were Coal River Mountain Watch and Friends of the Mountain Networks. This allowed women to play an important role in pushing for social change in the coal fields for a long period of time. Another key argument was that community-oriented activism in the late 20th century occurred due to neoliberal restructuring in the, in in the industry, which shifted the locus of organization in the coal fields and pushed society away from the trade, unionism, and toward community-based organizing. The shifting locus of disagreements with capital and industry away from the trade unionism and Tory community organizing is due to neoliberal tr trends in politics and the economy. The factors that were associated with this shift were due to the decline in trade unionism and the decline in the United Mine Workers of America. Specifically, the restructuring of the mine I mining industry, restructuring of the capital, and the changing role of the state in affiliation to cap the capital. An example of this is the Appalachia's coal fields. The second reason was caused by community-oriented activism um, due to the men and women derived capital from distinct social environments in Appalachia and in other places. Resources that contributed to their status and, and identity allow women to have more freedom to surpass restraints on labor and link together broader communities' issues into a single activist cause. This allowed women to always be involved in union activism in informal but meaningful ways. Men's symbolic capital has been related to their capacity as a breadwinner in the past. The final reason is due to the union's declining membership numbers. Its loss of prestige and power is a primary source of men's symbolic capital. For historic reasons, women organize in different ways than men do. Women foster a more collaborative and cooperative approach to activism. When the union was fading, there was a need for a new structure to represent local people against the power of the coal mining industry and the state. Though Coal River Mountain Watch and the Friends of the Mountain Coalition had nowhere near the same powers as the United Mine Workers of America. Activist communities helped to provide a social space to help citizens through these hard times, created and organized new identities, practices, and forms of activism to reflect these changing interests and values, which functions like a civic commons. Women often had more freedom to address the broader range of issues by using a wide range of tactics than men did, since men's roles in activism were outside mine and union. The union helped to establish a differentiation between women's and men's social spaces, but the decline in the union had affected the source of men's symbolic capital. Union, young miners also stood due to the decals, also stood out due to the decals and stickers that they placed on the objects that they owned, which allowed them to express their voice in a different manner. This allowed them to proclaim their hostility to environmentalists the union, and the community distaste for Macy Energy. They had decals on their vehicles that said things like, I mine coal, you're welcome, and Earth first, we'll mine the other planet later. The chapter also outlined the comparison between male and female leadership and the Coal River Mountain Watch reflects this. Men emphasize the need to focus the group's energy and resources and to plan specific strategies for activism. They focus on tangible outcomes, including taking credit for accompli accomplishments against coal mining. Their leadership is charismatic, but not collaborative. They assume the importance of efficiency and accountability. On the other hand, women believe that leadership is collaborative and emphasizes for consensus. They focus on whatever problem was at hand which often did not fit neatly with a defined strategy, but persevered through it. They privileged their working relationships with other groups, especially other women, instead of taking individual credit for the Coal River Mountain Watch. 
They emphasize participation and empowerment by increasing involvement and investment in the activist process. The value of coal fields differ between the CEO and citizen activists. CEO believes that the meaning of the coal fields comes from the hardworking people who go out every day to establish value. The word value in this sense means something that is created by extracting, processing, and shipping goods. On the other hand, activists believe that the value of coal fields is due to the attachment of how people feel to a specific community, place, and to the landscape of the mountains. The word value is an activist's point of view is created between the people and through correspondence with the landscape. Another key argument of, against the unions was that they do not practice the importance of the education and training and are rigorously under certain regulations, which leads to a lack of success and frustration. The connections from this chapter to the larger book's theme, I discovered that there is the lack of ability to be heard by people with higher authority. An example of this is the comparison between citizens versus big corporations and males versus female leaderships. People have different mindsets and values, which causes tension amongst the people. People are also searching for a place that they can call home, which is away in a safe place from the mountaintop removal and mines. People's homes have been destroyed and the citizens have had a strong lack of power. Activist groups were created to help get people's voices heard and battle against the rising issue of mountaintop removal and mining. Activism is key idea throughout the book as people continue to look for ways to establish a social and political change in their environment. In conclusion, this chapter strongly displays that the women often have more leadership roles than women than men do to due to the way that they function. Mountaintop removal and mining have been a key battle for citizens that are being affected by but are struggling to get their voices heard. Activist groups are helping people to gain some comfort through this aggravating process. The pro the people deserve to have a place that they can call home and activist groups are helping them to do so.